Coming up on Network Africa, Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari extends his medical leave for the second time. Thus, the United Nations criticizes the trial of Muammar Gaddafi's son, Saif al-Islam, says it does not meet international standards. And the bodies of 74 migrants wash up on a beach near the Libyan city of Zawiya. It's great to have you on Network Africa, I am BC Adebayo. We'll begin today's program with a statement from the presidency saying Nigeria's president, Muhammad Buhari, needs more time to rest and may not be expected in the country anytime soon. According to the statement, test results from his annual checkup show that he needs a longer period of rest. The statement quoted President Buhari reassuring Nigerians that there is no cause for worry. However, he thanked millions of Nigerians who have been sending him goodwill messages and praying for his health and well-being. The president left the country last month on an annual leave and a medical vacation, which he wrote the National Assembly of his intentions to extend. It's now about 32 days since he left Nigeria. The president wants Nigerians to know that he appreciates their prayers, he appreciates their concerns, he appreciates their goodwill. And... Uh, he has added that there is really no cause to worry. He is the one who owns the body, is his body, and uh, there is nobody who will know his body more than him. And it is no cause for worry, no we cause to it. worry rather. Uh -huh. Nigerians will be wondering now uh, how long. Uh, how long? No, no, no. You know that I speak for somebody. I don't speak for myself. So it is what he tells me to say that I say. And the statement transmitted to me is that the president needs to rest for some further time. So, so I can't say anything Nigeria. beyond that. What we have just said is what I would rather have us believe. The president says he needs to rest further. The same president that communicated that to us, when it is time for him to come, he will also communicate the date and the time he will come. The message I'm communicating is let us learn to be leave our leaders. This was a man we elected into office. And he says, no cause to worry. Let's believe him. The United Nations says the trial of Saif al-Islam Gaddafi does not meet international standards and he should face murder charges at the International Criminal Court. Since his father, Muammar Gaddafi's toppling in 2011, Saif has been held in Zintan, a mountainous western region by one of the factions that began contending for power after Gaddafi was killed. He was sentenced to death in July 2015 by a Tripoli court for war crimes, including killing protesters during the revolution. Zentani forces, however, refused to hand him over, saying they do not trust Tripoli to guarantee that he will not escape. The UN report on the trial of 37 defendants, including Saif, cited serious violations of due process such as prolonged incommunicado detention without access to families or lawyers and allegations of torture that were not properly investigated. Now let's get more on this story from a legal practitioner, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze. Thank you for joining us on the program, Mr. Eze. Thank you, ma thank you very much. Now, what do you make of a UN accusation that Saif al-Islam has been denied a free trial in Libya? Yes, I think the UN is right because Libya is a party to the United Nations uh, Charter. And under the United Nations Charter, uh, every member is supposed to uphold uh, international uh, standards in its criminal procedure and practice. So Gaddafi's son has not been given, uh, has not been given a fair treatment and fair trial. But in any case, the people 
who are in control of Gaddafi's son, the Zinta militia, are non-state actors. But uh, it is necessary for the United Nations to make that order so that Libya will have a responsibility, we have a duty, we have a mandate to go after the Zinta rebels but to extricate uh, uh, Gaddafi's son and hand him over to the ISIS. Well, do you think what the United Nations is likely to have any impact? Is he likely to be released? And do you think he will get a better trial, if at all, he's brought to Tripoli, where the UN-backed government is based? Yes, they'll get a better trial because the UN-backed government is bound to obey the UN. And if they send him to uh, the ICC, the overall implication that is that even if he's charged for murder, the maximum sentence you can get in ICC is 30 years imprisonment. Because there is no sentence of death in the ICC books. So that is why, and you know, within the 30 years, anything can happen. So if we have a, a better impact on his trial, and there will be witnesses that will give evidence against him, and in the absence of witnesses, he might even be released. Completely. Now, Mr. Ize, Africa is looking to develop its own justice system, but if the ICC keeps mediating in all of these cases of war crimes on the continent, is it going to be possible to develop the continent's own justice system? The ICC operates on the principle of complementarity. If Africa develops a system, a criminal justice system, that will be fair that we need the standard international best practices, like the trial of Hussein Habri in Senegal. If Africa is able to develop it, I think we have some inappropriate circumstances. The ICC will not wait until Africa develops a system that has met international standards. Besides, Africa